Hi folks, Jason Webster here. Welcome to this edition of Inside PTI. Hey, we're at the PTI farm. We've got a combine behind me. We're getting ready for harvest. And one of the biggest questions we always get is how wet should our corn be before we start harvesting corn? So here at the PTI farm, we do have a grain handling system, a drying system in place, and we're harvesting corn at 30% moisture and we'll let it dry down all the way to 15% number two yellow dent corn. And what we're trying to do is study a couple things. One, is there such thing as phantom yield loss? Do corn hybrids really lose yield as they naturally dry down in the field? Second thing we're trying to study is what is the most economical harvest moisture each and every year? So we've got a phantom yield loss study. We've got five different corn hybrids in this study from different seed companies, different germplasms, different pedigrees of corn. And we're again, we're gonna harvest at 30%, let her go all the way down to 15, and we're gonna find out which harvest moisture makes us the most money. All right, so I'm standing in front of our GSI dryer. This is our dryer that we're using here at the PTI farm. And, and it's been really interesting to look at the data of corn coming through this dryer and looking at the expenses of it versus going to our local grain elevator and paying commercial charges. Let's, let's take a look at yield first. As we've harvested corn the last two years in this, in this particular research study, we've started off with our highest moistures at 26.5% moisture. And that has been our highest yield in the study. And what, what I mean by that is as we let corn naturally dry down in the field, we saw corn yields lower. 24% corn, we're losing about 3.8 bushel of corn. We let it dry down to 19.5%, we're losing about 7.5 bushel of yield. And then at our driest moistures of 16%, we're losing almost 12.5 bushel of corn. So we're, you know, over the years now, we need to figure out where is this loss coming from? Is it respiration? Is it, is it, is it removal of the weight of the kernel or is it just harvest losses in the field? It's some of the things we need to work on. But nonetheless, right now, as we let corn dry down to 16%, we lost yield. And this is an average of over five different corn hybrids. Now we've established that wetter corn is making me more yield on a per acre basis, but we got to look at the economics of it. Cause if I deliver wet corn, I got to pay the drying and, and the shrink and you know, I look at 26% corn, my local grain elevator is going to charge me 34 and a half cents a bushel to dry that corn. 32 and a quarter at 24% and a 19% corn is going to be 18 cents a bushel. So I'm going to have to pay those charges. I'm also going to have to pay shrink. A lot of our grain elevators in this, this uh, immediate area, they're charging 1.4 to 1.5% shrink. And I don't quite understand it. Because Purdue University did a study years ago that said 15% corn has actually got a shrink factor of 1.15. And so we're actually paying a grain handling fee to our grain elevators when they're charging us an upcharge of 1.4 to 1.5% shrink. But nonetheless, it's a real cost. It's something that we have to account for. And when we do that, we pay the shrink and we pay the drying charges Wet corn just doesn't pay. You're, you're going to have a drying cost when you, when you take wet corn to the local elevator, even though we're seeing some of our highest yields come with our highest moisture corn. But it isn't enough to offset the charges. What about not going commercially to our local grain elevator and drying corn through this dryer behind me? I think it's been awful interesting because the numbers just flip. Now, our 26% corn, the same moisture corn that gave us the highest yield, I'm being more efficient in drying, and I'm actually making the most money on a per acre basis when I dry it on farm. Now, I'm using propane. I'm paying $1.68 a gallon on average over the last two years, and I'm $7.64 an acre ahead um, at 26% than, than 24% corn. If I let corn get down to 19% corn, I'm over $10 ahead and 16% corn. There's a lot of folks that let their corn dry down because they don't want to pay charges, but, but I'm actually losing near $30 an acre by doing that. And so the numbers say right now here at the PTI farm, granted it's only been two years. We, we want to look at, at, at more years to, to see the difference in commodity price and the cost of drying. But right now our data would say if we've got a grain dryer on the farm, 
24 to 26% corn has been kind of the sweet spot for us. And we're going to stay there until the numbers prove, prove us otherwise. And I, I do think, on the last note, I do think it's interesting looking at the overall dollar advantages of on-farm drying versus going to my local grain elevator. I'm 54 to $66 an acre ahead by drying my own corn and not paying the excess shrink charges. And I think those are pretty significant. 55 to 54 to 66 dollars an acre. Even dry corn, taking you know, letting it go down to 16% corn, that's eleven dollar an acre advantage by me drying corn up here uh, here at the farm. So so pretty good numbers. Again, this is an important year for us coming up in 25 because it is our third year. It'll be important to, to get three years of data together and really analyze the numbers. But we'll continue doing that and we'll bring the numbers to you. In the meantime, thanks for joining us for another episode of Inside PTI.